present. Yep. Here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're on to a public comment section. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. We have no uh, public comments apparently. And we're on to number five. Notice of public hearings. 5A, 1751 Kern Sanitation Authority and Kern County Service Area 11.4, a protest hearings. Mr. Knox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This annexation and dissolution was approved by the commission at the October commission meeting. This approval was conditioned on the completion of a protest hearing. The protest hearing was closed on Monday, December 2nd. No protests were presented to the commission. Having not received the required number of protests, LAFCO staff will proceed to complete the application. It's my recommendation you accept the protest hearing results. There's a vote required. Do I have a, a motion? Motion. Second. 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 Yeah, I have a first and a second. A, uh, First by Mr. Bauer and a second by Mr. Couch. Uh, please cast your votes. Okay, we're on to uh, 5B, 1758 County Service Area 34. Protest hearings, Mr. Knox. Like the previous item, this annexation was approved by the commission at the October commission meeting. This approval was conditioned on the completion of a protest hearing. The protest hearing was closed on Monday, December 2nd. No protests were presented to the commission. Having not received the required number of protests, LAFCO staff will proceed to complete the application. So it's my recommendation that you accept the results of the protest hearing. Is there any public comment to uh, this issue? If not, commissioners, do you have any comments or questions? If not, um, do I have a uh, motion? Motion, Sanders. Second. Walter. Okay. I have a first and a second. Um, a second. Please cast your votes.
Okay, we're on to uh, number six, 6A, the 1755 City of Bakersfield and Current County Service Area 18, uh, City of Bakersfield Annexation 685. Mr. Knox. This proposal is to annex approximately 2.21 acres of land generally located at the southeast corner of Virginia Avenue and Washington Street intersection. The surrounding properties are commercial and industrial. The annexation was initiated by the landowners, Randall Davis and Jennifer Tracy Gamble, for the continued use as an existing tow truck business and to be afforded access to economic opportunities only available to businesses within the city limits. With this annexation, there will be no tax increase. Zoning will remain uh, M3 industrial. This is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, and specific plan. Of course, there's no ag uh, land conversion. It's consistent with commission policies. It conforms to assessor's parcels. There is an indemnification agreement. Uh, the, there will be a functional overlap with CSA uh, 18. Therefore, the CSA 18 will be detached. Uh, as the water supply will remain the same uh, because there will be no change in how the business is operated. Uh, CEQA, <laughs> CEQA is handled by a notice of exemption by the applicant. No uh, affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act have been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. Annexation to the city has 100% landowner consent. The city has requested that notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived. So it's my recommendation that the commission consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant waive notice hearing and protest hearing and approve annexation number 1755, Washington number six and detach from CSA 18 and that's detachment A. Do we have any pub, uh, public comments to this annexation? If not, commissioners, do you have any comments or questions? Move approval. Second. I have a first from Mr. Couch and a second from Mr. Bowers, uh, Commissioner Bowers. Um, please cast your votes. Okay, we're on to uh, 7A, 1747 Shafter Wasco Irrigation District. Annexation number 10, resolution condition status regarding Proposition 218, election pursuant to Government Code 56884. Mr. Knox. Yes. The shafter Irrigation District, also known as SQUID, uh, annexation was approved at the June Commission meeting with conditions that a protest hearing and a Prop 218 election be held. LAFCA staff held the protest hearing. The results were provided to the Commission at the September meeting. The Prop 218 election was held by the district. Attached is a resolution by the district announcing the results of the election. As both conditions have been met without a sufficient number of protests or votes, LAFCO staff will pr proceed with the completion of the application. So it's my recommendation, recommendation you accept the results of the 218 election. Do we have any public comment to this annexation? If not, commissioners, do you have any comments or questions? If not, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. A first by Mr. Couch and a uh, second by Commissioner Morrison. Um, please cast your votes. We're now down to number eight, general business A, approval of claims list number 19-09. Uh, do I have any commissioners comments or questions? If not, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. I have a yeah, first and a second. Uh, uh, please cast your votes. <coughs> We're 
We're now at 8B, uh, uh, 2020 commission meeting schedule. Mr. Knox. Every December, we set a schedule of commission meetings for the next calendar year. Our normal schedule is being interrupted by the CalAFCO staff workshop that will be held at the same time as our March commission meeting. Looking at the calendar, the logical approach is to move the March meeting back one week to Wednesday, April 1st. As April has five Wednesdays, we can hold the next meeting on the Wednesday, the 29th of April. As typical, we will be dark in July and combine the November and December meetings. So it's my recommendation to approve the schedule as presented. <coughs> next, next meeting will be uh, January, the fourth uh, Wednesday in January. Okay, is there any public comment to this issue? If not, commissioners, any comments or questions? Okay, I have a motion. A second. And a second. Uh, please cast your votes. Okay, we're on to um, 8, 8D, uh, the 2018-2019 audit, Mr. Knox. I, I believe we had the due structure before that item. Item C. Item well, C. We do. I'm sorry. Um, uh, 8C, Cal LAFCO due structure modification and increase. Mr. Knox, yes. I'm sorry. That's, that's okay. At the last commission meeting, I presented a proposed modified due structure and increase for Cal LAFCO. CalAFCO is a trade association, association that represents the 58 LAFCOs in Sacramento. The chair requested I be the delegate and the commission requested I vote against the proposal, which I did. Unfortunately, due structure and increase were passed by a wide, wide margin. Most of the LAFCOs with, uh, with minimal due increases had already taken items to their commission and approved. There wasn't really an opportunity to negotiate at the business meeting. Uh, the board did indicate that there will be considerable modif they will indicate that they will consider modifications to the due structure, but also made it clear that they, uh, that unless they are pushed, there will be a little change. The new, the new due structure will raise our dues by 58% or $3,940, uh, which is considerable. And I see that there are three choices. One, pay the increase and accept the new due structure. Two, independently make a decision on what Kerlafco is willing to pay. Or three, drop out of Calafco. Calafco, I believe, is a worthwhile organization that provides significant assistance on two fronts. One, dealing with Sacramento, and two, providing education to staff and commission members. The work in these areas are both cost savings and allow us edu educational opportunities to become a better LAFCO. So I do not recommend that we drop out. I also think that we should not roll over and automatically accept the dues increase. While we did have a fair vote at the conference, the due structure was set up so that only about 20 of the 58 LAFCOs will see significant increases. That leaves 38 LAFCOs with no incentive to vote against, which for the most part, they didn't. As the, do as the board left the door slightly open to change, there's still an opportunity to negotiate. In good faith, I believe we should contribute to reducing the structural deficit of CalAFCO. To, this, to do this, I recommend uh, that we approve an offer to CalAFCO of an increase of $1,000 above last year's dues. Okay, is there any public comment to this issue? If not, commissioners, do you have any comments or questions? I have a question. Yes. Is, is <clears throat> offering to pay a certain amount of dues to Cal LAFCO, is that kosher? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been done before? Not, not to my knowledge. Okay. There have been LAFCOs that have complained and have very small LAFCOs that said we can't afford 
I do do structure. Right. So they kept it for the very small counties that kept that, that number very small. It's really the mid-sized counties like us um, that have a significant increase. Large counties like Los Angeles, they had a 2% increase, which it's isn't nothing. much. Right. And now we are paying the exact same amount of Los Angeles County, even though we have 9% of the population of Los Angeles County. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm, as the commission, you can decide what you want to do. I put three options out there, but it's, I think it's worth letting them know that we're not just going to roll over and take, and take the increase. Mr. Chairman? Yes. The other options are still available to us. They are. Okay. So um, I'll move your recommendation. My thought is we, we make the, the offer to them. If they say no, we come back and we discuss it further. Yeah. Thank you. I'll second that motion. I have a first and a second. Um, uh, please cast your votes. Now we're on to um, 8D, 2018-2019 audit, Mr. Knox. Yes, I would like to introduce Rosalba Flores. She's with the Brown Armstrong Accounting Firm and has completed the audit for 2018 and 2019 fiscal year. I will say a few words and turn it over to Rosalba uh, to kind of finish this out. Again, this year we came in under budget and without any questionable spending. I would like to thank Erin for her bookkeeping and organizational skills. Aaron worked with accountants to provide most of the information that went into this audit. Uh, there is a recommendation that we add a category for pension liabilities. These are estimated calculations provided by CalPERS of the amount it would take to close the funding gap between what is paid in and what is estimated to be dis distributed. This will help identify areas of our budget that we can control on a yearly basis. As this, as this year's budget was passed in the spring, any changes would be reflected in the 2021 budget cycle. I will uh, turn it over to Rosalva to say a few words, and if you have any questions, then we'll come back for a recommendation. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Um, again, my name is Rosalva Flores, and I am with the firm Brown Armstrong. I am um, the accountant responsible for all um, accounting and auditing services to your commission, and we have completed the audit procedures. I'm very happy to report uh, that we provided an meaning that we were satisfied with all the information that was provided to us, and we were able to uh, affirm that the financial statements uh, that were provided to us were completely accurate. Um, so I just want to kind of say that um, in addition to um, the clean records that we viewed, um, we also were able to uh, wrap up our procedures in a timely fashion, and this was also uh, with your assistance of all your staff, we were able to uh, obtain all the information and, and conclude our audit in a timely manner. Um, as uh, Blair said, uh, we did have a recommendation, but it was not nothing uh, to be of concern. It was mostly a best practice uh, where we found um, that uh, there was a line item that could have been broken out in your financial statements to kind of clearly uh, differentiate the adjustments that are being done on an annual basis uh, to report your net pension liability. And uh, just keep in mind that uh, these assumptions uh, that are made uh, to calculate your net pension liability are derived from um, actuarial uh, reports that we uh, are provided with and we reviewed. And so um, the financial statements, um, it, I felt that it was, uh, a good way to distinguish those adjustments by separating a, a line item rather than uh, including them in salaries and, uh, and uh, benefits. And so when you look at your schedule of budget to actual, if you consider uh, that there are significant adjustments made to that line item, it could kind of be confusing. And so uh, we came with that recommendation uh, to break out that line item and that where it would be more clear on what those adjustments were and not necessarily an adjustment made to the salaries and benefits line item. Okay. Any questions uh, by the commissioners? If not, thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes. So it's my recommendation recommendation to receive and to file the audit for the fiscal year 2018-2019 and a second recommendation to add additional category for pension liabilities into the 2020-2021 budget. I move approval and thank you for your report. Second. I have a first and a second. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. We're now on to 80, Executive Officer's miscellaneous items, Mr. Knox. At the last commission meeting, I informed the commission that we'd be closed for a week as we were going to be in Sacramento for the Cal AFCO conference. <coughs> and during that time, uh, we were having a remodel of our office. I would like to report that that remodel has gone su very successfully. Uh, there's still some cleanup work as there always is those kind of projects, uh, but we're very satisfied with our new office uh, carpet and paint, and we moved, we took some windows out and did some other other projects. Uh, actually, Bud and I did a lot of IT work with our computer equipment. Um, yeah, that was fun. So we, we were in the ceiling more than once to run lines and get 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 that stuff straight. Uh, Commissioner Bauer, you mentioned uh, potential damage to files. I'd like to report there were no, there was no damage to files, and our computers all came out um, with no problems. Uh, we were at the CalAFCO conference. A um, couple things that stood out to me. One was I had an interesting conversation with the state controller's office about the inactive list. You might remember I brought to you Kern Valley Resource Conservation District. Uh, currently, they are not considering putting it on the inactive list because two years ago there was $34 in interest that was earned in a county account. So we're trying to get them to realize that that's not real activity, that's just static, um, and that the district should be dissolved. So we're continuing to work on that. Um, you're already aware of the vote on the due structure. Uh, one of the other items that came to my... I, uh, came to me very strongly was the unfunded liability retire, retirement benefits. Not only for us as LAFCO, but many of the, small, the special districts and cities who have very, gonna have a very difficult time paying their, their retirees over the next couple of years. Um, how that affects LAFCO and the, their abilities to fund us uh, may, be, may be an issue in the future. So I, I'm trying to keep that in mind you know, if they don't have money to pay their, their employees and beneficiaries, their, their retirees, we're going to be down the list quite a ways of what they're going to be wanting to pay for. So uh, we need to keep that in mind. It looks like we may have a new property owner at 5300 Linux, which is our office. Um, met them for the first time. I can't divulge who they are because it's going through escrow, but we're working with them. So kind of excited about that. I've also asked the current Groundwater Authority Planning Manager, Patty Piore, to make a presentation about the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act at our next commission meeting in January. Sigma is gonna take a large role in what we do here at LAFCO and how we assess water. Uh, currently, we have very little information about water usage from cities and special districts. That is going to change here in January when they're starting to have to report significantly more and we're gonna to have to look at it more closely. So partnering with the um, uh, current Grand Water Agency and understanding what each of us is doing in the process, I think is beneficial for this commission. So I've asked her to come. Uh, with the uh, remodel the office, I've uh, been thinking about record management as we've got boxes and boxes of records that go back decades. Tom and I are working on a policy document that outlines when certain documents will have to be that we have accumulated in the office and when they can be destroyed. I will bring this to the commission for approval when it's complete. I expect it will be a straightforward and won't need to run to the policy committee uh, first. Speaking of the policy committee, um, we have not met uh, since, since uh, really two months ago. I was trying to get it done before this meeting and unfortunately I was unable to. 
We still have the issue of substantially surrounded for the city of Bakersfield, who's brought this up. So I am hoping that here shortly, I'll get another email out to you guys and come up with a date that works for everybody to get together on that and, and continue to work on that. Um, I've been approached by Southern California LAFCOs. Um, they've done an interesting project where they, five LAFCOs have pulled together and did, done an RFP for audit services. So instead of having individual audits, they, I mean, they do have individual audits, but they're pulling their audits together as one pr package to accounting firms. Uh, this year we're paying $11,500 for our audit. Uh, and last year, LA LAFCO, which is a significantly larger LAFCO, paid $7,500 for their, their audit. So it's a significant savings if we, if we join them in having a pooled RFP um, for audit services. Our contract currently runs through next year, so it would not affect this uh, upcoming year, but after that, we would potentially be, be part of that pool. The good news is it would save considerable amount of money. Probably, uh, most likely, the accounting firm would not be from our county. Although, Brown Armstrong does auditing services for several other counties throughout the state. So they could easily bid on the project as well. Um, so if there's, unless there is any, there, there's no danger in us uh, showing our interest, unless you tell me not to, um, I will let those five LAFCOs know that we're interested in, in seeing a proposal and we can opt out at any time. But it'd be good to have that available to us at a significantly less price. I believe on your desk is a list of statistics for the year. Aaron, were those handed out? Great. Yes. We've had a very successful year, as you will see from our, our, our statistics. Oops. Uh, I'm not going to read them all to you, but we've done 14 annexations, four detachments, five SOI amendments. Uh, 20 dissolutions, that's, that's new for us. Of course, we did um, 18 CSAs we dissolved in this last year and two districts. Actually, 19 CSAs with one additional that we just finished. So we've been very successful. We've got a lot of work done. Uh, also, want to point out that um, we have scanned over 800 maps uh, that have been miscellaneously put through our office. Lily Moore has been working on that for us as well as going through the old files and re-scanning re files that were incomplete. Uh, really appreciate her work on that. And, and Lily's, Lily's here today. Thank you, Lily, for doing that. Thought you'd want to meet our all of our staff. So that's excellent. Um, and then looking forward, we have 26 proceedings opened, uh, 18 pending applications, eight, uh, 20 proceedings pending closure, and we've closed 34 proceedings within this year. So we've, we've made uh, quite a bit of headway. And we know of 32 other projects in the pipeline, which are other annexations, MSRs, um, could be a sphere of influence amendment. These are what we know is coming, coming our way in the future. So want to share that, those, that data with you so you're aware of how, how we do for a year. And that's the end of my executive okay. officer's report. Uh, we're now uh, moving into closed session. We will be in closed session. Mr. Chairman, um, you've evaluated the uh, executive officer, and is there a motion to be made? I think you can call for a motion on whether or not to increase his salary. 
Yeah, the board uh, has agreed to, is that the correct phrasing? Pardon me? The board has agreed to, is that, would that be a correct phrasing of, of a motion? Okay. The board's agreed to a 4% salary increase for the executive director. That'd be fine. Okay, that, that's the motion. Second. Motion approved, all ayes.